And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, coming to us straight from UB's Adventures, currently crowdfunding Sentima Shattered Wilds. The one and only Powell Tarka. I'm hoping I got it right this time. How you doing today, man? Or tonight in your case. Nice. Hey, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I f first off, I do, I do want to congratulate you, you guys for, put, for successfully launching the Kickstarter and putting out that little, um, de that little demo on your itch page. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, the, our writers team worked hard on uh, working out the details of the adventure so that essentially it gives you a very good overview of what the end product, our game, is going to look like, how it's going to play, so definitely check that out. Mm -hmm. So, I usually... So a lot, it's a tradition around here to open up with the humble beginnings, the origin story, if you will. So walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Um, I've been playing uh, role-playing games for about 15 years now. And uh, I think my first introduction was through D&D 3.0. Yeah, pretty sure. And, uh, I, you know, it was back uh, in middle school, I believe. So um, we didn't have a clue uh, back then how to play this. But uh, uh, it's uh, it was a very new experience. Uh, like, RPG scene uh, here in Poland is... Uh, quite different. Uh, it's always been very focused on more grimdark, uh, mainly Warhammer uh, series. So starting from D and D was uh, very different from what I uh, expected from role playing games. Essentially, it was this very wild and um, and uh, adventure focused romp throughout the plains. Uh, rather than very grounded and dark experience that I expected because of that, you know, uh, Warhammer uh, focus of the of the culture here. Mm -hmm. So, given given that, um, we're with sent with um Sentima, you're we're dealing with in, essentially exploring insects, but was. Was that adventuring rap one of the big inspirations for doing the kind of direction that Sentima has? Yes, definitely. Um, we didn't want to go into the more um, heavy tactical slash uh, uh, miniature based gameplay of D and D three point five uh, or three point oh uh, in that case. Uh, but uh, overall, the the feeling of adventure, the feeling of uh, stepping into the unknown and kind of taming the the wilderness uh, is very much prevalent. Um, this is an, uh, a very wild and uh, high fantasy world with floating islands, with eldritch winds blowing through the skies and mutating everything they touch from uh, from the terrain features to life forms, creating new and exciting places for adventure and survival scenarios. So I think uh, uh, in that regard, definitely, uh, the uh, the high fantasy of D&D did inspire us. Mm -hmm. Now, give, you're, you already mentioned D&D 3.0, but what other... Um, what other... Whether it be book, whether it be books, whether it be games, etc., would be in the appendix N regarding um, regarding inspirational or, e or even just material to reference 
for the type of campaigns that sentiment um, supports. Um, so Sentima it has uh, four main um, types of stories that it is intended to support, and they all deal with some sort of survival wilderness uh, themes. Um, and we took care to prepare variant rules uh, that you can put on top of the very basic rule set, right? To uh, play a type of genre uh, of the story that you wish to have. So, um, for example, uh, there is a very horror-like blue theme, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, supports uh, very uh, a bit more heavy, right? Uh, dark stories set in gloomy forests and haunted by this uh, presence of a behemoth that stalks you like an alien in you know the uh, the famous movies. So um, there is this variant uh, in which uh, completely differently green variant where you basically build a cottage in the wilderness, uh, look uh, out for your friends um, and raise crops and uh, uh, and collect uh, various pets, um, which is also uh, nature themed, but it's probably uh, much more uh, uh, suited for uh, younger audiences and uh, general people uh, who like slower paced and uh, a more socially focused gameplay. Um, and uh, uh, there is the red theme uh, in which you uh, stand tall against the constant struggle for survival, where uh, the, your ammunition is limited, where you need to scavenge and despoil nature in order to survive and master it. And uh, finally, there is a yellow color, which is mostly focused on heroic adventures. In that, uh, the characters are much more powerful, and it's uh, very well suited for playing solo or with two players. Um, uh, this, these scenarios uh, are uh, about uh, glorious heroes mm -hmm. who prevail against uh, uh, unfair odds, uh, no matter what. Yeah, and now t taking th taking that into account, um, I do find the ru the rule set that you're using a bit a bit interesting, since the core mechanic, as I understand it, is a three is a three d twenty affair, um, where you're yes. like, where you're aiming to try and get one, two, or three success three successes to to see how well you were able, were able to pull it off. Oh. Yes, I'm... we uh, value um, the degree of success mm -hmm. mechanic very highly. We want every um, role to show how well you you did on any, any given task, and maybe include complications at you know one success, and create critically critical positive effects at the I end up with three successes. Mm -hmm. uh, and to my no to my knowledge, the only the only game I can think of that that um fo that dips into that idea of using three D twenties to determine success is um the Dark Eye over over in Ger over in Germany, and the and even then, that's not exactly the same as what you guys are doing. Uh, definitely not the same. Um, we tried to create something fresh with Sentima, something new. Um, there is uh, uh, a lot of uh, new, fresh ideas uh, that we wanted to explore. Mm -hmm. And uh, to my knowledge, this way of handling 3D20 is new. Um, I want to claim that's definitely new. We tried our best to do research, and so we hope that people uh, will find it interesting. Um, 
other than uh, the black eye um uh, one of our uh, local systems here uh, a post apocalyptic game called Neuroshima uses it but in a very different manner um uh, we really wanted to tap into resource management and degrees of success. Uh, we tie our second most important system, uh, stamina, mm -hmm. to uh, to the degrees of success and stamina management through uh, through resting, through eating, and uh, uh, getting the right tools for the job is all an important part of the struggle for survival. Yeah. Of course, I I also appreciate that, unless I'm mis that in the in the um in the in the demo characters there was the there was the field of knowledge kind of thing because a a bit of a nitpick I've had when it comes to when it comes to skill systems in a lot of RPGs is when knowledge is treated as its own skill, it inevitably leads to bloat. Uh just yes. look at look at all of the knowledge skills that were in 3.0 or all the knowledge or all or the sheer number of knowledge skills that are that are on Pathfinder character sheets to the point of being outright offensive <laughs> for an example of what I mean by that um i understand that yeah. and in general we wanted to the skills to be mainly focused on uh crafting and uh, survival skills. Mm -hmm. We don't have uh, fighting skills on purpose as well. And uh, we wanted to give fresh new avenues of developing the character. So our system is without any uh, level mechanic. You are not gaining uh, experience, you are not gaining levels. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, even the skills do not work uh, as, in, as they tend to do in uh, skill-based systems where you gain XP to spend on skills. Rather, uh, skills are uh, things that you start off with that create the basis of your experience and gameplay, but your growth is through items that you craft, through um, unique legendary ingredients that you use, mm -hmm. and through natural and uh, organic exploration of the game world, you are also gaining knowledge about it. And uh, with the knowledge, uh, you are able to better prepare for the challenges that you are about to face. So um, the knowledge mechanic that you mentioned is one part of uh, our progression system. Characters explore and investigate the world and slowly build up those you know, blocks of knowledge that they can then uh, utilize to gain friends because of shared knowledges and shared experiences and hobbies, or they can use during investigations to ask important questions um, uh, that will speed up um, the process of learning a monster weakness, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, item creation is one. Item creation is one of those things that a lot of a lot of game a lot of games attempt, and resu results of that have been mixed. Uh, and since since that since that is one of the major pillars of your game's design, what what approaches are you get, are you guys taking to mit, to mitigate how um, crunchy item creation has a reputation for being? Um, so most of our item creation is very open ended, as we basically give the players a, a challenge and. Uh, ingredients that they can use to uh, craft their own solution to that challenge. Uh, there is no hard list of items that uh, can be made, but rather each ingredient that you gather will have uh, several tags which generally describe its form and uh, its uses. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can have a tag like liquid for a form, and you can have a tag uh, such as uh, flammable or conductive 
for uh, for the effect tags, and you use these to create various gizmos and tools of your own imagination uh, that you know how they work now, or you know what are their effects based off uh, which uh, tags do you uh, manage to uh, pass down to the final item. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, we do have several uh, like pre-made items. Uh, they work as special rewards. So an important part of the game is the idea of the hunt, of going into the wilderness and fighting a boss monster, a powerful behemoth, a walking uh, natural disaster of sorts. And after defeating such a creature, you uh, get to loot and harvest its very valuable body parts. Mm -hmm. And from those body parts, each body part of a very high level creature or, you know, high rarity creature uh, tends to have a specific uh, recipe uh, tied to it that you can craft a sort of legendary item with unique uses that uh, will save you for for a long time and will become like a a, a mark of your victory over uh, insurmountable odds mm -hmm. and it's it sounds like the main if i'm not mistaken the one of the main resources mm -hmm. for crafting is um rp no um, All right, my, my mistake, well, I may have misread well, it. Well, that depends what you mean by resource. Maybe I'm misunderstanding you, because the most important resource to me in the R system are the ingredients. Mm -hmm. You naturally traverse the world, and you can harvest uh, plants, you can uh, uh, butcher animals that you kill, and uh, you can mine ore, and they all have uh, their tags, their unique, uh, uh, not, not so, like the unique set, right, of uh, effects. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, uh, there are also research points mm -hmm. that um, that we wanted to use as a kind of a bridge between um, the fantasy of uh, uh, of crafting various wild gizmos and the practicality of it so some players really like to describe uh, how things work and can walk you through every step of the crafting process but uh, realistically very few people can do that and uh, we accommodate the people who want to have a fantasy of crafting without the need of uh, coming up with detailed descriptions of how things work. And you can essentially spend uh, research points which you gain through travel and investigation uh, in order to say, all right, I have uh, I have this conductive thing, right? I want to create a lightning gun with it. Mm -hmm. And you spend an RP uh, on, on that, and that means your character is inventing some wild stuff and it works you don't need to get into the detail of how as long as the tags match what you are trying to do mm -hmm. and speaking on speaking on that um i do find the i do find the way creatures were li were listed out in the in the uh, demo to be in to be interesting um as it, de it definitely it definitely looks like there's that there's multiple angles that ca that it can be done, especially with the RBYG at the top. Um, yes, so uh, we wanted the fight, uh, the fights, the combat sequences to be uh, very immersive, mm -hmm. uh, rather than like crunch number crunching, right? N not numerical, uh, not mathematical in nature. Uh, we wanted to create this fantasy of uh, standing toe to toe against a creature that completes, completely alters uh, the nature around it and creates 
very specific challenges that the characters must uh, overcome. So rather than uh, simply um, dealing damage to each other uh, each round, um, you must think of an encounter as a set of ways in which the enemy tries to kill you, or at the very least defeat you and scare you off. And how are you gonna overcome this? Uh, and that's why it's very important to come to a fight prepared. And as you mentioned, the cults, each enemy uh, is uh, uh, mutated in a way because the nature of this world by four winds mm -hmm. and they are color coded, red, green, blue, yellow. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are uh, very simple descriptions of the general uh, style the creature takes towards survival. Red creatures are very aggressive and try to go for the quick kill. Blue creatures are stealthy, agile and uh, treacherous, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but um, in gameplay terms, um, weapons also have colors and uh, the attribute of a creature, uh, say a creature has wealth in red uh, attribute means that this is the uh, difficulty of a test uh, when using red weapon against it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's best to learn beforehand what are the attributes of a creature to make your to do your research to ask around about the creature and then use an appropriate colored weapon against that monster to target his weakness. Mm -hmm. So, so given that, given that, um, when it comes to the tr when it comes to the tribes within within Sentima, it's mentioned on the Kickstarter that there's twelve available, each with two different professions. Yes. Um, so one thing I'm curious about is what it is um, in character creation, what a profession brings to the ta brings to the table. Um, right, so um, the profession is a starting package, you could say. It's by choosing a profession, you choose what overall play style you would like to go with a given character. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be uh, someone that uh, uh, deals with explosives, for example, or do you want to be a leader of your group and uh, help them uh, with your stratagems? And uh, uh, how uh, we do it is each profession comes with a single strong uh, feature, peric, uh, as, uh, as we tend to call them, which uh, which is a defining uh, trait of your character from now on. It's something that um, your character, uh, like unique, tra unique trick your character has up their sleeve. Mm -hmm. On top of that, um, you start with um, with equipment based on your profession. So. If you are playing a gunslinger, you can expect to start with a gun. And uh, if uh, if you are uh, playing uh, a, a scholar, uh, then various research tools will be at your disposal from the very beginning. And finally, um, areas of knowledge, which we have talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, each profession, uh, well, naturally comes with its field of expertise, and you start with uh, several, um, I think it's usually two or three uh, fields of expertise for professions, and uh, essentially um, that allows you to um, ask uh, questions to, uh, to your uh, game master, our trail guide, as we call them, uh, about your profession and skip the arduous process of investigating, asking, you know, around 
and learning for yourself, your character already knows this. So you gain access to that knowledge immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, since the so, now one of the one of the things that you can, you kind of hinted at earlier on was um, was airships, and I'm curious if um, if in the in the full book you'll have a, you'll have a ship a sheet I should say dedicated to the party's airship and being and being able to customize it. Um, most likely we will end up uh, with a character sheet. Generally, we try not to bloat the resources you need to have on hand when playing the game. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we tried to go with the least types of dice. Uh, our game uses d20 and d6, uh, and that, d6 only for rolling also on some tables. Uh, and similarly, yes, you will be able to build your own ship and develop it. And this is probably the main end goal that uh, most of the characters in our system will have. Uh, essentially, you are building a flying hive, uh, collecting uh, uh, resources for it, building new features but also gathering crew and, uh, and specialists. So uh, I imagine there will be a need for, um, for the ship character sheet. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, seeing as it is an end game goal and uh, sort of a uniting, um, uniting feature for many characters mm -hmm. um, is a, it's going to be a very important part of the game with aerial events, aerial combat and uh, and exploration. Mm -hmm. Now, given the given um, the four, the kind of rule of four colors that also applies to the winds um, when when it comes when it comes to deal when it comes to dealing with energy storms, um, is it a case where there's go where you're going to have a set of tables that determine kind of kind of the effects and how severe the storm is? Um, generally, all storms are severe. Um, uh, we have two storms uh, currently for each color uh, and um, essentially the trail guide is free to pick uh, whatever uh, storm uh, they want to play around uh, in their story although for uh, our written adventures we tr tend to at least suggest what uh, what uh, weather type would fit uh, that story mm -hmm. and because it's Certainly, again, survival-based game. Uh, fighting against the weather and the nature itself is a constant, um, uh, constant issue for uh, the characters. And uh, there are several ways in which they can uh, predict the weather or uh, avoid its effects. But generally, uh, there is a new event each each passing day that. Uh, forces the characters to uh, you know, craft their way out of a new challenge. Be, and uh, depending on uh, the type of weather that the, uh, the, uh, uh, the trail gate shows, it sort of funnels uh, the story into specific genre again. Uh, with blue weather creating really spooky encounters with living shadows, mm -hmm. whereas uh, green uh, weather, uh, which creates huge floods of nourishing rain and mud, which creates you know living jungles and uh, and fills barren wasteland with mutated plants and uh, ginormous creatures. Mm -hmm. So, with that, with that in with that in mind, um, 
I am cu I'm cur I'm curious if in if in your opinion a game like a game like Sentima would wor would work well in a hex crawl type of um type of set type of setup. Um, yes, although it's not required. Uh, in the early stages of development, we gave it a very uh, uh, considerable thought uh, whether or not we want the exploration to be completely hex-based. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we ended up um, uh, we ended up going uh, another direction because. Um, we came to a conclusion that hex exploration takes you out of the story, and we didn't want that. You should always be uh, looking through the eyes of your character, to be always in the moment, thinking about uh, how are they surviving another day, another uh, another hunt, rather than looking at the basically a game board, at the moving pieces. Um, we felt that without uh, hex crawl, it's uh, more immersive. But of course, that's subjective. And um, instead, our exploration is landmark based, and it's very narrative. So um, you are, uh, say, in uh, in the mountains, right? You look around you and you orient yourself uh, around several landmarks like uh, noticeable uh, land features that you can see and that's how you uh, choose where to go do you want to go to that uh, enormous tree or do you want to go down a mountain creek and uh, essentially each landmark is its own thing uh, with uh, with uh, gathering ingredients, uh, possibly with encounters, just like you would have in a hex scroll, but um, it connects to naturally to several other landmarks, um, as it's described by trail guides. So uh, you always consider where to go from the position of your character, what's around them, what other landmarks and terrain features they can see, rather than looking at, uh, at the map with, uh, with hexes drawn on it. And that's, that was a very conscious choice of, uh, on our part. Mm -hmm. Now, when it, when it, when on on the page it mentions um, modular monsters, when it comes to um, trail guides being able to build their own build their own behemoth for their campaign, um, mm -hmm. what what does what does that entail? Is there is there like a mix and match of of potential effects and templates? Uh, you definitely can do that, and uh, we want to ease the process of creating new monsters uh, through this. So um, each creature is essentially, in our game terms, a set of uh, important body parts, impactful bo uh, body parts uh, within the scope of combat, of course. And uh, the more uh, mutated body parts the creature has, the stronger it becomes. Uh, affecting its uh, four attributes. Uh, each body part uh, increases the stat line of the monster, essentially. And each body part is a new challenge to overcome. So uh, the monster might have poison gland, and that means that during sections of the combat phase, it will spit uh, streams of, uh, of poison at the characters. Or it might be, uh, it might possess a, a huge tongue and try to eat the characters from afar. And uh, on one hand, it makes them overall tougher because of the attributes, but also uh, gives them new tricks that the characters must account for. And these body parts are well, essentially interchangeable, and indeed some weather types 
uh, make the monsters uh, evolve uh, new body parts or change how they work uh, to some extent. So um, for the DM, it's enough to uh, pick a set of body parts you want to play around it around with uh, in a given combat scenario. Uh, tally up the attribute bonuses and done. You you, you can fight. Mm -hmm. um, the preparation of combat uh, scenarios is extremely quick uh, in this game. Uh, we wanted to make it easy for for the trail guides. Yeah, and I can I can certainly get I can certainly get behind that. Uh, now, with with that in mind. On the for as part of the Kickstarter, you're also put you're also putting in uh, a few a, a few adventure journals. Now, would the would it's not, would would adventure journals be akin be akin to one shot length adventures, or would they be um, longer in in um, the le in the length of them? Uh, they are definitely longer. Um, <laughs> They serve as um, as kind of mini settings, as each uh, adventure journal introduces a new island and goes uh, a bit in depth about how it works, mm -hmm. offers some uh, plot points uh, and uh, story hooks, uh, features important uh, NPCs to that island, and uh, uh, and new monsters, new uh, ingredients to be found. So, and on top of that, a uh, a storyline. So, if you don't use any of the um, of the features that come along with it, so you don't use the story as a basis for uh, new plots. You don't use the NPCs in any like. Uh, in a special way, if you just open the book and play through the adventure that you have there, it's still uh, around for gaming, for our gaming sessions, right? And uh, on top of that, you are set uh, up with a questing hub with a place that the characters are familiar with and where they can remain and uh, have new adventures as uh, as the plots are already established mm -hmm. for the trail guides to develop as they see fit yeah now with that with that in mind what are you shooting for as far as a page count for the core book at the very least um <sighs> I believe uh, we will end up between 150 and 200 pages. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm get I'm I'm guessing when it comes to the adventure journals, those are get those are going to be not big, not bigger than 100 pages each. Um, that depends still uh, how much content the writers will put, uh, but uh, I imagine around hundred, below hundred, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I will cert, I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it de how it develops. But with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple. And enjoy the enjoy the madness that happens around here. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>